god. It's tough. <laughs> oh my god. Oh Christ. My gooch is on fire. We've come to the Carrefour de Labra, one of the most brutal and infamous sections of cobbles in the entire world, and a section that regularly features in Paris-Roubaix. Just making it to the end of this section in particular is a feat within itself. I mean, if you don't have a mechanical a crash or a puncture here, then you're doing pretty well. Yeah, and to make it even harder today, they're wet. But we want to find out just how hard it is riding a demanding section of cobbles like this. And to do that, we're going to pit a beginner versus an amateur, me, and a professional, Connor. So hang on, I'm the pro then, you're the amateur. Yeah. Who, who's the beginner? <laughs> Don't worry, I found just the person. <laughs> he doesn't even own a bike. Sure, surely not this guy. <laughs> George, our beginner cyclist. Up until today, you'd never even seen the cobbles before, let alone ridden them. What do you think of the parve? This? Yeah. This isn't even a road. <laughs> no, it's not. The Carrefour de Labre is a two kilometer stretch of some of the worst cobbles you can possibly imagine. It's one of only three five-star sectors in Paris-Roubaix and comes 15 kilometers from the finish. It's often a decisive moment in this epic race. And when the pros ride along here, they'll typically do it at 40 kilometers an hour. Now, we're really interested to see how our times compare. Our comparison experiment today is really simple. We're each going to ride the two kilometre section of cobbles from a rolling start, so like you would in a race, and then we're going to compare the times that we do and also our power outputs as we can measure this on the bike. Yeah, and it's not just the power you're going to be able to put out on the segment which would define the effort. It's also your technical ability. This really is quite a tough challenge, actually, just to get from the start to the finish of the cobbles. And, and stay upright. Yes, it is. I mean... Especially today, because the cobbles are wet. So that means they're slippy. Oh, right. Well, I actually haven't bought a bike, so I don't think I'll be able to do it. Don't worry, George. Oh. You can borrow mine. Oh. OK. And you're going first. Hey, go on, off you go, George. Yeah, see you later. You'll be all right. Come on, you'll be all right. OK. Good luck, man. George, I'm going to give you the beeps and then you're off, okay? Yeah. Hit lap when you hit the cobbles. Yeah. Come on, George, you can do it. Beep. Remember what I taught you. Beep. Come on. Beep. Beep. Run. Oh, I've punctured. Yep, I've definitely punctured. I got a puncture early on. So I jumped into the back of the car to finish the route and get Ollie's bike fixed. But I'm not going to tell the lads, I don't want them to be disheartened, so I'm going to wait till they've gone and I'll give it another go later. I hope George took care of my bike. I really like that bike. Anyway, now's my turn to face the cobbles. I'm feeling a little bit nervous about hammering myself on this particular sector, but I guess just give it, give it the best I can. <laughs> you can give me the beeps, George. Hand him in. Three. Beep. We're doing the beeps. Beeps? Oh, we're doing beeps. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. Beep. 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 <laughs> Go on. Go on, Ollie.
was tough riding along there. I, I feel like my fitness is good. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I've got good power, but I don't feel confident getting all the power out onto that surface because it's slippy with the water on it and the mud. And I'm worried that I'm going to come off. I like the technical skill, but it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how Connor gets on. It's tough. <laughs> well, they saved the best till last. Here goes nothing. Good luck. Go on, Connor! He looks good, doesn't he? Doesn't he looks fast. That's actually pretty tough actually, so slippery at times with a bit of rain on the cobbles. I was doing everything I could just to keep up sometimes. <sighs> Interesting to see how the others got on. Better go and catch them up. Guessing they've gone to the pub by now, so <sighs> better find my way there. <sighs> oh, knackered after that. Now that the guys have gone to the pub, I've snuck off with the camera team to film my proper run. It was getting dark, but I wasn't going to give up. Put over because it's not that cold today, but for some reason, because you're grabbing on so tight and the handlebars are just hitting your hand so much, my hands are absolutely frozen to the bone. And I mean, my gooch is on fire. I'm gonna get back on it so my time's not affected very much, but that's my, that's my update. I've had my rest, so back on the bouncing. Thank God that's over. Uh, wasn't any more fun the second time. Those the cobbles and the vibrations through your arms. My arms are like boiling hot and freezing cold at the same time. And I'm definitely going to have cramp tonight. Let's get back to the uh, hotel and see how I did against Ollie Bridger and Connor Dunn. And um, oh yeah, I'll also tell them the truth that I didn't actually finish it the first time. So we're back in the warmth, which I'm very pleased about after our runs, and we've got the results. So first up, our pro, Connor. You managed it, the car called the Labra section, in four minutes, 31 seconds. Oh no, I'm happy about that actually. Yeah, yeah I'm time. happy about that. I mean, I was in full winter kit as well, on my own, and it was pretty cold. So, to be honest, Considering the circumstances. Windy. Yeah, windy, windy, as well. windy, don't forget that. Yeah. Didn't have the adrenaline going either in the race. And it was slippy and wet. Yeah. So I psyched myself up. I'm happy about that time, yeah. Good. I'm glad I'm glad you said that and I'm glad, glad you made some excuses because it makes me feel better about my time, which was five minutes and forty-five seconds, which was a bit slower. But one thing I am conscious of is like my power was quite low for what for what I can do. So I averaged about 220 watts for the section. Whereas normally I'd be expecting to do around 380, 400 watts for that length effort, but I couldn't get the power out because I just, although I have good fitness as an amateur, I don't have the experience and therefore the technical skill of riding on cobbles. And especially when they were slippy, I was just nervous. And there were times when I stopped pedaling because I was worried I was gonna fall off. Mm. Which brings me on to George, our beginner. You managed it in 12 minutes and 10 seconds. It's a good time, you should be pleased. Yeah, I think, I'm not so bothered about that time because 
Although it's slow, I'm just glad I didn't break any bones. Well, so, no, but you, like, you did well because you've never ridden on that terrain yeah. before, and it was really slippy. Ridiculous. How did you find it? There was moments on it where, if it was if you were going on any other bike ride, it's the type of thing where you stop and turn around because it's not rideable. But I think that's what most sensible people would have done, to yeah. be honest, Josh. And you know the. Pros do that every year. Yeah, and they'll typically go a bit faster than what Connor did around sort of three and a half minutes when they're doing it in the race. But that is usually, in, as we said, better conditions and there's a drafting benefit and a whole host of other reasons why they'd be a bit quicker. So no worries, Connor. But what have we learned from today? Well, pros are faster than amateurs, I think is one thing clearly, but also the fact that you can have really good fitness as an amateur but it's more than that to ride on the cobbles. There is a huge element of skill and technique required. And the other thing is that even as a complete beginner, you can still negotiate and get over the cobbles, which is a great thing to see because they're so accessible and easy to ride. You know, it's a bit of a cliche to say you can't go have a kickabout on Wembley, but it's true. You can't go have a kickabout at Wembley, but you can come and ride the cobbles of Paris Bay, which I think is a very amazing and special thing. Just make sure if you do come and ride in this part of the world, you pack plenty of inner tubes. Oh yeah, that, that reminds me. Yeah. Um, on my first run, I actually punctured about three minutes into the effort and the car dragged me all the way. This is news to my ears, George. Yeah. So you didn't actually ride 12 minutes? Oh no, I did. I came back after you guys had done it. And that's why I got back so late last night. Ah, don't worry about that, mate. That's one of the great things about the cobbles is that anyone can puncture. I mean, we could have all equally have punctured and it's that unpredictability of them that makes them so amazing and so special for racing. Yeah, and I think you did well just to get to the finish, to be honest. It's a hard challenge for anyone to finish from yeah. that cobble section. So, well done, mate. Proud yeah. of you. Thanks, you did good. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like and let us know what you think down on social media. Ha, 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 ha.